Hi, welcome to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, tonight we have an interesting problem um, sent to me by uh, a friend of mine, uh, Brad, who teaches at the Bay School out in uh, Presidio at San Francisco. Um, so his problem uh, that he called me about was he has a, uh, uh, a ring shaped part that he needs to space a series of holes accurately around the periphery of it. Um, his problem is um, that he doesn't have um, an indexing head, a uh, rotary indexing head or a dividing head, um, and he doesn't have a, um, uh, a rotary table that he can mount the part on. Um, his rotary table is uh, not configured right uh, to easily mount this part. Um, he could probably squeeze it onto the rotary table that he has, but uh, anyway, it's, it's a better exercise if uh, we show him a different way to do it, and that's what he called me about. Um, so I'm going to show two methods tonight. Um, one is kind of a geometrical way, and the other is kind of an old school uh, jig boring method where we use rectangular coordinates uh, to help us out um, to accurately index this part. So I'll start out by showing you what the part looks like, um, his problem part that he has. So it's a ring-shaped part, and um, it looks something like this. Okay. And um, it has a series of holes through it. Space equally around the periphery, and it's 20 holes that's through the uh, uh, through the rim of this part. Um, I don't know what the diameter of the holes are. Um, it doesn't really matter for this exercise. Um, what does matter is that the the shape of the part and uh, the number of holes and the method. That's what we're showing. Um, so. He told me uh, this diameter here is uh, uh, 2.864, I think is what he said, and then this diameter here is 2.5, okay? Um, I don't know what the width is here. It doesn't really matter for our, uh, our exercise. It can be any width, um, so it's kind of irrelevant. So we're just going to put a question mark there. Um, the two methods we're going to show, one is uh, what I call the strip method, and uh, the second is called uh, uh, the rectangular coordinate, or the jig bore method, okay? So this one's pretty straightforward here, um, although it's kind of backwards from how it's normally used, but uh, it still works for our problem here. Uh, the strip is more interesting uh, to me anyway because it's uh, it's a kind of a, a geometrical uh, method for dividing up uh, this ring. It's not um, it's not as uh, so this is the less accurate method and this is the more accurate method. But they're still they're both fun and uh, it's an interesting problem and uh, it's of general interest to people that are interested in machine work and. Uh, uh, and might not have a rotary table or a dividing head to, uh, to do this kind of work. Anyway, so that's our problem. Um, so I'm going to make up some parts and, uh, and uh, do some of the, uh, the grunt work and get that out of the way so we don't have to take up a bunch of video time watching that, although uh, some of it I will show. Okay, so I'll be right back. So we're over here on the lathe. Uh, I got a piece of aluminum here and it's three inches in diameter. So we're going to turn it down a little bit. We'll open up this bore um, and then uh, we're going to part off a little piece to uh, uh, so we have a ring model of uh, uh, like uh, what Brad's trying to do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that. So I'm just touching off here. Set my dial, and I got to go in uh, 136. All right, so 
we're going to make the ring about uh, three quarter wide. Uh, there's a reason for that uh, that you'll see in a little bit why uh, I'm making it three quarter wide. three quarter plus a little bit for the card off. The diameter doesn't matter too much in this case. Um, we'll make it the same as Brad's uh, just because it's easy to do. Uh, but it's kind of arbitrary. We can divide up any uh, any number of divisions uh, that we want on the OD of this. I'm going to go ahead and face the front off. Okay, so that's close enough for what we're going to do. It's within a couple of grand. Um, so now we'll go ahead and uh, open this bore up. And I don't like this insert that's in here. We'll swap that out. Something a little friendlier. So I know where the heck I am. And we're going to peel some out of the middle there. Once again, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, it's just to simulate the ring shape part, so uh, you know, makes a good demonstration. So. Nine sixty three five one inch nine sixty five seventy five eighty five ninety five. All right, so that should be about two inches right there. Um, like I said, it doesn't really matter. You know, machinists like to land on uh, nice, friendly numbers. I call them and. Uh, 
it just kind of pays you back in the end if you don't have a bunch of oddball numbers you're chasing around. Uh, you never, never know when it might make a difference. So if you have a choice, land on a uh, some nominal size if you can. If it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're just going to call that good, whatever it is. And I'm just going to just barely break these edges here. A little bit on that one, and even less on this one. There we go. You know, you can never resist measuring to see what you did. Okay, so one and a half thou over, which is fine with me. So, okay. So let's whack that thing off. And no pun intended. We're going to part that off. And this will be a scale dimension since I don't, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Something like that. Uh, I'm going to kick the speed down a little bit here. Um, you know what? No, I don't think I am. I'm just going to go for it. And let's see how it behaves. And we'll get that ring off of there. And I'll show you another little tool here in a second because uh, we'll face the other side of this ring. So, kind of cool. to catch that but I didn't so uh, I could feel it soften up and then uh, I didn't grab it so my bad all right so there's our ring we're gonna go ahead and face this other side I'm gonna show you another little tool that we got here let's get this out of here all right so what we got that's of interest here is this guy, this little backing plate. Um, this fits in the chuck usually. You got to get it just lined up. There it goes. So that fits in there, and what it does is it's it's a parallel surface that's spaced off of this back side. So it's really nice for stuff like this that's kind of narrow aspect ratio. You can put it in here and, um, and then clamp down on it and you got this nice parallel back. So sometimes guys stick parallels in there, but I found these things to be um, real handy. You know, if you're doing a lot of flange, flangey work or rings and stuff like that. So pink, you see, I'm in there and it's pretty straight. You can it has screws on the back side here that you can adjust to vary the space in relation to the back of the uh, uh, the back of the chuck there so we can kind of get any any spacing that we want so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick face cut on this and then chamfer this side and then we got our ring here
So one ring, so we're kind of ready to go now. back so we've got our got our ring here and uh, we're gonna do these uh, these peripheral holes here and we're gonna use two methods just a reminder we're gonna use a strip method and we're gonna use this uh, rectangular coordinate jig bore method so uh, while I was uh, had the video off uh, I made this little disc here it's got a little step in it uh, this is gonna be a little kind of a fixturing piece it fits this, uh, it did fit the board. There it goes. So it fits the bore of this piece here, nice and snug. Um, and uh, this is going to be a fixturing piece to help us index that. So we'll see that in a little bit. So what I want to show you now is uh, this, um, this uh, strip method. So what we're going to do. Uh, I'll kind of explain it first and I'll go, through, go ahead and do it. So we're going to take a piece of tape. This is just thin uh, strapping tape. This happens to be filament tape. Um, you would want to use something that, uh, that doesn't stretch. Uh, that's what's important, uh, that it doesn't stretch. And we're going to take and wind this around this periphery nicely. This is a single layer and then we'll cut it so that those ends match as good as we can make a match. So we'll overlap and then we'll cut through and then we'll get a nice clean, uh, uh, clean straight cut. Uh, and the tape will be the same as the circumference of the aluminum disc. So that's the general idea there. Um, now, the way that works, so what we're gonna do is, uh, so we're gonna have this, uh, this, this strip of tape here that will be this length here, L, is equal to the circumference of, the, uh, of this ring, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna, so that length, we wanna divide that into 20 spaces. And I'm gonna show you this a little closer um, so you can see it, but uh, I just wanna explain the concept to you. So we're gonna take that strip, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it on uh, some graph paper and then on the graph paper, we're going to take um, a series of even dimensions and uh, like you would with a tape measure. So if we laid out uh, 20 inches, uh, although it won't be 20 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out 20 equal spaces like that. So the space between those will be exactly equal. Um, and there'll be 20 of those spaces. So then what we do is we take our strip, okay, we take our strip and we take this corner here and we line it up exactly with this first increment here. And we lay it at an angle and we change this angle, keeping this point over the first mark, we change this angle and my stuff's in the way here, until this corner here is exactly over the 20th increment, okay? So then the idea is that what we're doing is this is the tangent and we're, we're, we're changing that angle until that hypotenuse is equal to that length, okay? You guys see that? So then the cool part is, is what we do is we now we just take these and we transfer these up, I'll start down here, we transfer these up to this line, okay, and now this space here equals 1 20th of the, of the circumference, okay, without doing any math. So this is a graphical method, a graphical method of dividing um, a a strip of uh, some length, and we don't care what the length is, doesn't matter. Uh, it could be any length. So we be, almost don't need any measuring tools here. Uh, the only thing that we need uh, measuring tools for are these equal spaces. And these equal spaces are completely arbitrary. So you could step these off with a pair of dividers, 
and in 20 equal uh, increments and it, it would work fine. We would just have to transfer those lines straight up um, and intersect this angle here. So anyway, that's what we're going to show with the tape uh, and I'll show you a little close up of that with the video and you can see that. Um, so normally, you know, in the uh, in a normal shop, we would use something like this, which is a uh, dividing head. This is a little Ellis dividing head here. And uh, when you rotate this, there's a gear drive, 40 to 1 ratio, and it rotates this, uh, this chuck. So we could just mount this on the chuck, and, and uh, it's at an angle right now, but we'd mount it straight. And, uh, uh, and then using uh, the correct number of uh, spaces of holes here, we would divide this up into 20 increments. Okay, so that's another method that you could use. Um, a fourth method is with a, a rotary table, and this is just a small little rotary table that I made uh, for myself many years ago. Uh, and we can mount um, the part to the rotary table, and then we can do just angular indexing. Okay, so there's, there's problems with angular indexing, although uh, at this level of, uh, of accuracy, it's not a big deal. You can generally get pretty good uh, spacing with worm gears, um, especially even, uh, even numbers. So this is uh, um, 20, um, it's 20 holes, so that's uh, 360 divided by 20. It's, yeah, it's 18 degrees between increments. So it's a nice even number, so we don't end up with a a fractional part of a degree which uh, starts to complicate uh, uh, dividing um, uh, dividing something like this um, with ang an angular method like this. This is a little different here uh, because we're using an index plate so it's actually a dividing head as opposed to a rotary table although it does kind of behave like a rotary table. Um, so anyway that's kind of the short story. Um, I'm going to move the camera around a little bit and uh, we're going to show this tape method on this and, uh, and how that works, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so here's our setup here. We got our graph paper, we got our tape, and uh, we got our ring. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to lay off uh, 20 equal divisions on this. Now this paper here is uh, um, it's five squares to the inch, uh, but almost any graph paper would work. Um, one of the things is the the whatever our circumference of this is, right? The circumferential length of this is, uh, and this is 2.864 times pi. Um, it's about what uh, nine inches. So this is about three pi is about three. So three times three is nine. So the circumference of this is about nine inches. Um, so what we want is we want our twenty divisions to be um, slightly uh, less than uh, than the circumference. Not, it doesn't have to be a lot, um, but uh, just a little bit less than our circumference. So we want to be less than nine inches. So we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and mark those off now. I'm just going to start here. This will be number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 19. 20. So that's 20 and that's 1. Okay. So let's just double check that, make sure I did it right. So that's like 7 and 5 eighths. Okay. So a little less than 9. All right. So now all I've done there is, is just mark an intersection on the graph paper. So the grid on the graph paper is square. Um, so that, hel that helps us later on. So now what, what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and uh, uh, I'm going to cut off a little piece of this that's about nine inches long. Something like that. Just to make it easier to handle. And I'm just going to run it through my fingers a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just killing the glue a little bit. Okay. 
I don't want it to be super sticky because I'm going to put it down on this paper. So what we're, what we're going to do is just kind of wind that around this guy here without stretching it. Oop. It's already sticking. I'm just going around the going around this thing and keeping it nice and even. I'm not pulling on the tape, I'm just making sure that it's lined up with this edge nicely. Going off a little bit there. And this is filament tape, so it's got okay, so there's my uh there's my joint. I'm coming up to my joint. So I just want to go a little over that joint like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim that off. Cut my oops, shit. Okay, I'm still all right. All right, I'll just I'm just going to overlap it. I don't want to cut myself on camera here. <laughs> I just put a new scalpel blade in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I can see that other seam in there. So I want to make sure I cut through that one too. So very carefully without killing myself here. Just going to cut through that. Okay. So that should do it. Okay. And then there's a little, oops, the little extra under piece there I'm going to get rid of. Okay, there's a little overlap piece there. I'll probably find that on my shoe later on tonight. <laughs> Maybe I can't get rid of it. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we got a nice, a nice match up there. So this tape equals the circumference of the uh, of this disc. Okay. So now we'll go back to our paper here, and you can see our our division. So I'm going to unwind this now. Okay. Now what I'm going to do. I'm going to line that corner up there on that mark. And I don't want to stick it to the paper too hard. This is my this is my line right here. I just got to highlight it a little bit so I can see what's going on there. I'm going to put that corner down nicely. I'm looking for that corner to line up. Pretty good right there. Oop. Well, I got oily hands. Okay, it's not bad. Alright, let me do that again. Hopefully I don't kill it. Oh boy. This would be easier on a on a piece of smooth plastic or something probably. Got to get it off of my darn fingers there. Okay, so there we're, we have this hypotenuse going. So now I'm gonna, all I'm going to do is I know the first one is right there. Now the second one's right there. Third one's right there. And so on. And so on. And so on. Now you can do this with with scribe lines. You could probably make cuts in the tape for real accurate or more accurate uh, more accurate spacing. But this is actually pretty good for dividing up uh, um, a circumference. And like I said before, and then there's the last one right there at the end. Okay. So so what we've done now is we've got these little blue tick marks on it now. Probably kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can get here. You see those little tick marks? Okay. 
So those are 20 equally spaced um, things, divisions. So we can put this back on our we can put this back on our uh, our part carefully. And now I don't want to rub off those those marks. And if I did everything right and carefully and clean, this should line back up, which it does. And you can see you can see that seems pretty good. Okay, so there's our there's 20 divisions all the way around. So now what we would do is we'd set this up in the mill against the stop, and we'd find the center of the part with an edge finder or whatever, and then move over to wherever we wanted it in this direction and um, um, we could rotate the part until it lines up uh, with a mark boom drill a hole we rotate the part dun, 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 off you go so 20, 20 turns later you've got uh, 20 equal spaces around that now i'm not going to use this to uh, to drill the holes because um, i want to show a different method for that and i don't feel like making another ring and uh, but anyway there's there's a, a way um, using this kind of graphical layout method that you can um, divide a periphery up uh, into equal spaces. This also works for, uh, for plane figures. Uh, an example might be um, spacing um, the pickets on a fence. So you have a fence of a particular size and it doesn't divide evenly into a number of pickets or whatever or you don't have a tape measure or something like that you can use this method with string and uh, and things like that to uh, to help you uh, to lay out those pickets on equal spacing so kind of an old school trick um, uh, you see it a little bit in carpentry here and there um, see where else have I seen it uh, that's kind of that's a, the only reference that I know of so anyway that's one method for that and uh, then I'm going to show you this uh, uh, this disk method. Okay. Okay. So the next method that we're going to show um, for dividing up uh, the periphery of our part um, uses kind of a um, um, a coordinate locating uh, method. So I made this little uh, this little plug that fits in here. Um, that fits in there and uh, snugly and it'll register on the ID of that. So what we're going to do is uh, um, we're going to look in the, this is Machinery's Handbook here and everybody should have one of these. This is a great reference book. Um, if the world ever implodes and um, um, there's no more internet or whatever, uh, these are the kinds of books that are going to rebuild society. Uh, this kind of a reference book. This stuff is been worked out over hundreds of years and uh, it's it's all here for you to use um, and it doesn't uh, need uh, 3 or 4 G uh, <laughs> uh, access to uh, to get to it so what we're looking at here is this is a page of uh, uh, whole coordinate factors so you can take a uh, um, basically any number of holes on a particular bolt circle and you take that bolt circle and you multiply it by uh, the factors that are in here and what it does is uh, it gives you a X and Y rectangular coordinate uh, to locate that hole. So this is pretty old school um, and uh, it works and it works great and uh, uh, but it's kind of tedious you got to go through and uh, you know for three holes it's a piece of cake, right? Well, ours is 20 holes, and uh, and so it takes a little while to get through um, 40 coordinate positions. So you have an X coordinate, and then you have a Y coordinate that you have to calculate. So I started doing it, and uh, yada yada yada. I'm cranking away, and I'm going, "Geez, this is taking forever." And um, um, so what I'm trying to illustrate here is this is this is one way you can do it you can uh, just do the math and uh, and work your way through it and you're gonna get 20 X positions and you're gonna get 20 Y positions uh, when you're done and um, uh, so what that will generate is a is a uh, a, cir a circular pattern around this 
uh, with 20 equally spaced holes. And we're using uh, rectangular coordinates to locate it. And the advantage of that is uh, the, it's just inherently more accurate than angular indexing. So uh, it's a great way to space holes uh, in a very accurate way to space holes around uh, uh, a bolt circle equally. In the old days we used to use dividers and uh, we would uh, um, adjust the dividers a little bit and move around and it takes a little trial and error and you can get pretty close with that but with this method you can get extremely close uh, as close as you really want to uh, or would ever need to get okay so this is going to be a real accurate way to do this particular thing so I'm showing you this just because this is kind of uh, useful information. You don't have to do it this way. Um, we have wonderful computer programs that can draw a bolt circle and they can tell you where all those coordinates are because they've already done the math to place those holes. So that's what I did. Uh, let's close this up and set this aside. And uh, I went ahead and did that in, uh, in uh, AutoCAD. So I drew a, a 20 hole pattern real quick and uh, uh, on a two and a half inch bolt circle that's this diameter here from here to here and then what I did was I went back and uh, and got the coordinates of those holes and you see those coordinates here now you see just one quadrant of the uh, um, one quadrant of the uh, of the coordinates and so we know from math that uh, basically uh, the only difference between this quadrant and this quadrant and this quadrant and this quadrant is the sign of the coordinate. So we have positive, um, positive x, negative x, um, negative x, negative y, and then positive x, negative y here. Okay. So you know if you draw your your little coordinate thing uh, like that, that's what you get. So I really only need one. 90 degree segment the numbers are the same and they're the same this way so I just need that it doesn't clutter the drawing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the mill and we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and drill a series of holes around this here and um, uh, and we're gonna use those to help us uh, index this part in this direction okay so that's what we're gonna do and uh, so we'll pop over to the mill and, uh, and I'll show you that <laughs> 